And, and I can't think of a better person to welcome up on stage than right now, Tom Peck. My good friend, Tom Peck, who's new in town. He's the EVP, uh, CIO, and CDO of Cisco Foods. Uh, please welcome Tom Peck. Tom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, a little context. So Tom loves the Yankees, but Houston is your second, third best. Yeah, I'll be at the game Friday rooting them on because, you know, our Yankees aren't here. So you got to go with the local team and right. Astros are really good. So I'll be there. Right. So um, welcome to Houston. Nine months. How's it feel? It's, uh, it's been amazing. Uh, you know, as, as Hunter knows, I moved from Southern California, uh, two houses from the beach. Went scuba diving, surfing, paddle boarding almost every day and came to Houston. And uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, why do you come to Houston? It's just an amazing opportunity. I look forward to talking a little bit more about it. But um, I moved here about three, four months ago. Still settling in. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody, working with everybody, joining Sims. So you have 201 members. There you go. Um, and um, Well, hey, Tom, this is, you know, we're, we go back a decade. So um, this is kind of a trial close. I was working, uh, last, having dinner with Mark Taylor last night. I said, I think what we need at a global or national level with SIM is what, what I would call is an enterprise uh, super relationship where the CIO comes in and then we package in or bundle in six to 10 other, or as many seats as you want, but it's a fixed price. And you, you know, like a SaaS model, you're in for one, probably three years, and it's, it's, a, it's a marginal you know, expense, but it's, it's connecting to the local community and then the 40 other chapters around North America. And then it's amazing gift to your directs or C minus ones, because then all of a sudden they have this local resource to get connected in Houston at a different level. Are we 220 now? <laughs> what? <laughs> 220, right. Do you, do you like the model, the idea? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think that's a tri trial close right there, guys. Um, I think, uh, it, uh, look, I'm a SIM member 20 years uh, on a board at Fairfield Westchester, and SIM is the most unbelievable. I'd say it's one of the top 10 reasons I, I have where I'm, I am where I am in the industry right now. One of, the, one of the 10 contributors that got me here. But Tom, let's talk about you. You've had an amazing career. Let's just go back. I mean, the big break, your first CIO job would, would have been MGM? You got to go back a little bit further. Okay. So, um, fu funny story about me. So, I, I was in the Marine Corps for nine years, as, as some of you know. And uh, I was going to be a fighter pilot and an astronaut. And, and I was in love playing baseball, and calculus was really hard. So, I said, well, let me study finance. I'll go work on Wall Street with all my buddies. And um, did, did the Marine Corps for nine years. And I went to work for General Electric. And I was in their Six Sigma program and supporting their technology department. And one of the technology leaders uh, left the company. And my boss at the time said, hey, Tom, can you fill in? And I kind of looked around and, who, me? And, and you know, I broke, broke out the technology for dummies, books and things like that. And I think my, my lucky break was, was way back in um, probably the late 90s at, at, at GE, which um, uh, when you get those hard opportunities, those hard jobs where you're out of your comfort zone, uh, you got to take those. And, and you got you to trust your, your instincts, you got to trust your training, you got to surround yourself with great people. And it was a big, bold move, because I knew if I screwed up, I was gone or I was done. And then, and then that positioned me for my first you know, real CIO role, which was at MGM Mirage in, in Las Vegas. So you know, just being in the right spot at the right time. Some, sometimes people say, you know, you're lucky. And I like to say luck is preparation meeting opportunity. And I was in the right spot at the right time. True. Well, I mean, it's, uh, GE has some of the best leadership training in the at the time in the world, right? Yep. So it's probably in the Gary Reiner days. Yep. Gary was a big, big mentor of mine. I stay in touch with him. If you don't know, Gary is you know, one of the top CIOs in, you know, on the planet. And, um, still, still an amazing mentor. We must have hundreds of GE CIOs in the network around the world right now. So let's let's bring it current day. You know, when you landed here, uh, well, bring it brings current day for you. The, the different companies you were at, you were at uh, MGM, Levi, yep, AECOM, yep, uh, Ingram Micro, Cisco, all amazing companies. Can't hold down a job. <laughs> no, really. What what you probably are the. Do you go to something? You don't leave something. You go to go to something. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, those, those jobs over a 30-year career, you know, some of those were personal reasons where I wanted to be closer to kids or, or whatever, but uh, every one of those were just amazing opportunities. And, um, you know, my, my, um, my, my reputation, if you will, is a little bit of a uh, fix things and or grow things. And, and if you think about all those different companies um, at that point in time, uh, we were at this unique position, similar to Cisco today, where um, there was just this amazing opportunity, not just to be the, the CIO, but to, to be the uh, part of the C-suite, um, where you can actually reinvent, uh, transform, or, or help grow those companies. So it's absolutely you know, chasing those things and having an impact. So let's click down on that a little bit more. Uh, you said something specifically, fix things or grow things. And that, so that takes a lot of time to get that competence, the confidence, and then the understanding a brand matters, knowing your brand matters, right? Mm -hmm. Your why, your mission or passion, you, that, you love doing that. Yeah, yeah. And so you're really good at it. How many other people here, we're going to make it interactive, how, do you, how many other people really know their brand, your passionate brand, who you are, and how you relate to the world? Most, I'm impressed. 80%, that's great. Tom? Yeah, I, th I think, f f first of all, I, just to elaborate on your personal brand, I think it's usually important. And, you know, Hunter and I go way back. I, I, I love HMG strategy, what you do. H who I associate myself with is usually important. You know, my brand is uh, associated with, with Hunter's brand. And, um, you know, how, how we market ourselves, how our associates, employees look at, uh, at, a, at us, how our vendors and partners look at us, it's, 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 it's usually important. And, and that brand... Uh, that personal brand is is what has given me some of those opportunities, and and I realize in a in a leadership position that we, that we all have, you know, we're being watched and observed, and that that brand can be gone in a second, as we know, we've seen it in the news, um, you know, and and you just got to keep keep working at it, and um, uh, like you said, my brand fix it and or grow things, uh, big big you know Fortune 500 companies where there's amazing opportunities to leverage some of my, you know, my background. So, you know, we slowed down with the pandemic and went digital, and we did some analysis on our own brand, and we spent millions of dollars promoting the network, millions of dollars over the last 14 years creating a digital platform to get your brand and your image out there on our jet stream so you're associated with HMG strategy. So thank you, Tom, for all of your dedication and engagement over, over a decade, right? And it brings me to my next great story, and this is totally off script, but I know you'll love this. Hunter always goes off script, by the way. So. We already talked about we're going to go off script. So <laughs> uh, search executives, whether you like them or not, matter. Also, uh, placement agencies matter, right, Gene? Uh, having the right partners matter. Have, you knew in the pandemic who were your partners and who were your vendors, right? Agreed? Everyone agree? Right? You knew who the partners were because they were there, they helped you, they cut prices, they worked with you, they gave you terms, they got stuff for you, and they really worked 24-7. So search executives, I knew, were always going to be an important ingredient in this model, this platform, our company, HMG. And one of our dear friends is Mark Polanski. So let's go back to this time when you were in New York City, and you went in the MetLife building, and you went up to say, to introduce yourself to Mark Polanski. Yeah, great, great story. It's, it's fun, right? It's, it's funny that you remember that. It's a true story. Um, it says a little bit about my personality. So I, at, at the time, I was working for NBC Universal, and I ran um, technology for all their entertainment businesses. Think television, you know, home video, movie studios, theme parks. It's a really, really cool gig, okay? Um, Rockefeller Center, New York. Um, it was owned by GE at the time. At the, at the time, mid-2000s, GE kind of started a stall. Promotion started a stall. Uh, recruiters started a call. Um, my um, um, old boss at the time, David Overbeek, um, who gave me a lot of opportunity, uh, said, hey, Tom, MGM Mirage, this guy named Mark from Corn Ferry is looking for a CIO at MGM Mirage. MGM Mirage, now called MGM Resorts, runs half of Las Vegas. And I said, that sounds like an even cooler gig than NBC Universal. Who doesn't want to run technology at these casinos and resorts, right? That's, that's kind of cool. So long story short, um, I happened to be in whatever that building was in downtown Manhattan, speaking to one of Mark's competitors about an opportunity. And I said, um, uh, hey, I already have the security badge. I'm already in the building. I'm just going to go down to the Corn Ferry floor. I walk in and I say, hi, my name's Tom, and I'm here for the MGM Mirage CIO job. And they said, how the hell did you get in the building? <laughs> and I and, and, um, uh, dropped off my resume. Right. I left. Mark called me the next day, and he said, that's some courage. So, and, and I said, yeah, that's... That's great. What a great story. And then, so it doesn't stop there. Uh, Mark is involved with the uh, Cisco scenario as well. Yep. 
Yeah, and I, I think that one of the key lessons there is, you know, Mark and I go way back, and Hunter, you know, the people you, you uh, and, and you all know this, um, but the, the people you associate with and the friends, uh, the, the, the personal and professional relationships you build, you know, they really come in, come in handy, and, and they need to be genuine and authentic, and, and I know sometimes, um, um, we all get busy, I get busy, you take people for granted, you take your uh, associates for granted, and then 10 years from now, you're like, darn it, I, I wish I had stayed in touch with that person because that reference would have been really amazing, right? But that's not authentic. And, and um, you know, nurturing those relationships, and I think that's one of the values that, that we have here, HMG Sim, is, you know, really getting to know each other and learn from each other. So Mark's been a huge ally. Great stuff. You know, and then you walked into a scenario where you interviewed mostly remotely, some in person, but uh, you got hired in a, a, a global pandemic. Yeah, it, um, it was uh, probably November, December last year doing 100% video interviews um, in California, uh, the, the, you know, Texas two hours ahead, seven in the morning, eight in the morning Texas time. I'm at home, um, pitch blackout dark in, in my house doing video interviews, getting, you know, those ring lights, making sure, you know, I'm, I'm looking good and I've never done video interviews. This was all, this was all new. How do you read the body language? How do you get the personality? So. It, it was it was strange, and then I came in for the the in person interview into Houston. Gosh, when I think it was right after Thanksgiving, late November. I flew in. It was like a two hour delay because you have thunderstorms here. There's no thunderstorms in Southern California, um, and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, the flight was delayed. It was getting dark about five o'clock. It was kind of cold out. I was like, this is miserable. There's no sun. There's no people. There's nobody on the road. I showed up late for my interviews, and I was like, I don't I don't know about this Houston thing. Uh, but I came back the next day, met everybody in the office. Uh, you know, we were working from home, nobody was there. And you know, our, we have this great big campus on the west side of town, as, as some of you know. And um, you know, it's like me and two other executives doing interviews in person. But the whole process was strange. So what was, what was it about the opportunity at Cisco that you really were excited about? And why do you move and why are you here? Great, great question. I think, I think first of all, many of you probably know who we are and what we do, but just a, a real quick refresher. You're eating our food this morning, and um, we, you know, we're a food distribution, food service company. Um, we, we're about $53 billion in revenue. Um, we have about 400 different warehouses around the globe, uh, about 600, 700,000 customers. We cater to the food away from home market. Okay, so everything other than retail grocery, I think restaurants, um, airports, cafeterias. I took my, my, uh, my son on college visits uh, recently and you know, all those college campus cafeterias, things like that, prisons, you know, Hilton, Hilton is a great big customer of, uh, of ours. The um, um, a couple, couple things brought me here. One, one is uh, if you think about the COVID and pandemic economy, who was impacted most, uh, you know, airlines, leisure, retail, hospitality, restaurants, okay? What an amazing time to be a, a technology leader, but what an amazing time to be a technology leader in one of those impacted industries, okay? Um, talk about the need to accelerate digital transformation, and I, I, I kind of joined in the middle of it, so I don't take credit you know, for, for everything, but um, the importance of technology in a um, a market that's recovering from the pandemic, and, and, and you're working for a CEO who's amazing and talks about digital and, and leads with technology on earnings calls and talking to shareholders and things like that. Um, and, and oh, by the way, uh, my personal passion, supply chain, merchandising, you know, consumer products, pricing, th things like that at scale. We have 14,000 trucks and those trucks are all you know, high technology and um, you know, managing perishable foods and then the supply plain. It's just an amazing opportunity um, amazing people, amazing customers, amazing business leaders, amazing team I have, and we have, we have a, um, um, a purpose. It's about connecting the world to share food and care for one another. And connecting the world to share food and care for one another, one of the things that, that we believe in is uh, getting people together at the table, whether it's a breakfast table, a lunch table, or dinner table, it helps make a better world. It, it brings people together to um, communicate, to, to share and talk with each other. So getting to see our product um, being delivered to help people is, is, uh, is kind of a unique um, proposition. Your CEO us. seems very enlightened and you guys really have a clear mission and you're, you spend a lot of time together. We, we do. Um, so Kevin came from um, CVS. He's been in the role for, you know, probably coming up on, on two years here this January. Uh, joined right before COVID. Um, so Kevin hired me and um, 
like me, he, you know, we're both, we're both athletes. He, he was a world-class Olympic Team USA athlete. I was just a wannabe, but we both kind of share that, that competitive winning kind of spirit. We both come from, you know, big companies. Um, he, um, he understands technology, sometimes perhaps a little too much, um, but uh, you, you always uh, you want a boss who's supportive and, and understanding. Um, who can fly high, but at the time when you need it, you know, fly low, empowers you, and, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's all good. Uh, I, you know, I report to, to Kevin, I sit at the, uh, the leadership table, and I was telling Hunter, one of the, the challenges were a very inclusive um, C-suite, which means I get involved in everything, which is both good and bad. Uh, but I have to be really good about prioritizing my time, and Kevin's really good about helping me do that. So we talked about you know, the scale and, and the, uh, where you're pulled, how do you prioritize? Yeah, that's, that, actually that's one of the hardest things that I still struggle with and probably you know, most of us do. And, and if you say you don't struggle with it, you're probably lying, okay? Um, and I, I, I've been in lots of big roles, but, but the hardest thing is prioritization. We, we have um, a, a strategy just very, very quickly, we can talk about it more if you're interested, but we're focused on digital and e-commerce, we're focused on uh, uh, merchandising, getting the right product at the right place at the right time, we're focusing on supply chain, uh, we're focusing on sales and customer selling and team-based selling, we're focused on future growth M&A type things. Those five things consumes a disproportionate amount of my time, but those five things is like 80 hours a day, okay? Um, and you notice what I didn't talk about was like ERP and HR systems and infrastructure and cybersecurity. Those are important as well, right? So if, if I'm gonna spend a disproportionate amount of my time on growing the company, we've gone on record, we wanna grow one and a half times the industry over the next two years and uh, um, you know, lead the way and transform the industry, I need really good people that I can trust and empower around me, not just for execution, but for running all those other and I, I have an amazing team, amazing staff, and you know, thousands of people around the globe. And um, I just need to trust, empower, and um, you know, make sure that they're set up for success. Tom, how important is trust? Because we're going to hear uh, from Stephen Covey in a, in a minute here. How important is trust? And what do you do when you don't have trust? Yeah, tr trust is uh, you know, I obviously it's it's super important. Integrity and in, in all of, all of that. One thing I, I like to say is um, if I trust, I say it a little differently, but the, the gist of it is if I trust you and you're competent, I will leave you alone. Okay, that's kind of the, the gist of it. And as the new guy coming in or the new gal coming in, you know, you're, you're trying to find your way, you're trying to figure out who's competent, who do you trust, and you know, we're all, we're all assessing that, right? And the competency piece is, is really easy. The trust is a very discreet yes or no, and, and you, you, you get that real fast. For me, the biggest piece is I just need transparency and, and, and accountability. If something goes wrong, which we had something go wrong yesterday, we actually had a couple things go wrong. Things go wrong every day, right? And all I wanna hear is, hey, something went wrong, this is what happened, I own it, um, we're gonna fix it, and, and then follow up, do it, fix it. That, that's what trust is about, doing what you say you're gonna do and ha having that, that accountability. I, I like to say, you know, we as leaders should foster a, a safe culture where people feel safe to be honest and transparent. Hey, I made a mistake, had a problem, need some help. I, I say it's a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. So I think that's the, the trust. I'll go to my boss and say, hey, hey Kevin, I'm, I, I have too much going on. I need, I need help. Or, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Or, you know, and, and um, I think that also that empathy and humility helps build some of that trust as well. Because I don't know it all. We don't know it all. So you're, you're CDO and CIO, and so tech, Kevin says we're a technology company. Wow, that's a, what, a, what an amazing support from the CEO. You must love what you're doing now. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, the, uh, you know, sometimes people say, uh, you know, chief digital officer, what, what's a chief digital officer do, and what's the difference between a CIO, and if we went around a room, everybody might have a, have a different opinion. And, and so I kind of make up my own definition. And, and I, I define the chief digital officer part of the role as the intersection of people, process, and technology. And, and um, you know, some people are good at process, some people are good at uh, some, some are good at people, and some are good at technology. But nobody's really sitting at the intersection of that, that Venn diagram, if you will. Okay, and um, you know, really, really trying to figure out, you know, how do we um, leverage technology, people, and process to to, to really re reinvent ourselves? And and one. 
example, I, I mean, I don't, I don't take credit for it because it started before I got here, but we're, we're going at scale now is because of the pandemic, uh, we had a shift to, to e-commerce. You think about restaurants, uh, we're the eighth biggest online website, e-commerce site um, in the United States for e-commerce, uh, restaurants placing orders, trying to drive that, that B2C-like experience to a traditional high-touch B2B um, business. And what does that mean? That means every interaction we have with our customers, restaurateurs, caterers, cafeteria managers, chefs, um, we, we want that touch, every touch point, every experience to be the same experience that you get as a consumer. And that's very, very different thinking um, for traditional B2B companies. Great stuff, Tom. Great to have you here. You're gonna be here th throughout the day. I'm gonna be here all day. Folks, uh, welcome Tom to Houston with open arms. Oh, great, great stuff, Tom. We could, we could go for hours up here, I know. Um, and we're just scratching the surface. I, I mean, in true form, I probably had four pages of notes that I read over five times, Tom writing up what he wanted to present here today. So folks, Tom is a, a CIO Magazine Hall of Famer. There are only about 100 in the world. Uh, and he's an HMG CIO Transformational Award recipient. And at lunch, we're going to recognize him on a global level, the new HMG Global Recognition Leadership Institute program. So welcome, Tom Peck, to your community. He's an amazing guy. And uh, Tom, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you.